Hello, I'm George Lamb and welcome to Young Fishmonger of the Year. Last week we cranked up the pressure on the beauticians as they battled it out to be crowned the best. Now it's time to celebrate the unsung heroes of the sea world. Over the past few months, our experts have been casting their nets far and wide to find the brightest and best young fishmongers in the country. 100 were shortlisted and put through their paces with a written test and a nerve-wracking interview. The top 20 were then put through to the next stage and had their fishmongering skills scrutinised up close in a practical challenge against the clock. But only four got through to the finals. And you've made it through. Brilliant. Congratulations. And in less than an hour, one of them will be crowned the first ever Young Fishmonger of the Year. So, it's sink or swim time. Let's meet the fishmongers. Finalist number one from Somerset, 24-year-old Matthew Fishboy Murray. I think I've got what it takes to win this competition because I'm determined to do it. So my creativity will come into play as well and that's uh, something I pride myself on. The second finalist from Somerset is nicknamed The Fish, 24-year-old Sam Cunningham. I'm here to win this competition because I'm the best fishmonger here. I have a great technical ability. I'm just good all round. Finalist number three from Essex is 25-year-old Danny Blackshaw. I really want to win Fishmonger of the Year. I've got the experience, I've got the skills. Basically, can do anything with fish. His friends call him the Codman. The fourth finalist is Andy Lester. He's 24 and from Warrington in the northwest. Everyone keeps telling me that I'm the best in the north. Can't let Southerners win. <laughs> Southern varies. It's not right. Gentlemen, congratulations for making it this far. However, the hard work is about to really kick in, and these are the guys who are going to put you through your paces. He supplies seafood to the rich and famous, running Chelsea's finest fishmongers from London. It's man about town, Rex Goldsmith. From the winner of the Young Fishmonger of the Year, I want to see exemplary knife skills and, above all, pride and passion. And straight from the Cornish coast, he owns the biggest online fishmongers in the country and he's the go-to man for top restaurants and chefs, including Rick Stein. It's Paul Trudgeon. They've got to have that passion. They've got to love what they're doing, love fish and seafood. It's an art, you know. Filleting a fish is an art. So, Rick, what qualities are you going to be looking for in our young fishmongers? I want to see a good comprehensive knowledge of all things fishy and, very importantly to me, presentation skills. We want really to see some fantastic creativity. I expect to see perfect quality first time. You're going to get one chance to make a first get impression. One chance. Uh, gentlemen, let's get this competition started. Our judges have devised four gruelling challenges to test your skills as fishmongers. There are four of you now, but only two of you will make it through to the final, and ultimately, only one of you can win. This competition is going to be brutal and more demanding than any day you've experienced at work. This is the perfect opening round. Using a knife if your hand shaking is going to be difficult. If they rush it too much, they won't get the quality. I'm really looking forward to this one. This will sort the men out from the boys. Right boys, you've got 40 minutes. Let's get going. In this all-important first challenge, the fishmongers must demonstrate superb knife skills as they fillet six of the finest fish found in British seas. Judges Rex and Paul want to see perfect fillets and clean skeletons. That means no meat left on the bone. The finalists have just 40 minutes to show what they can do. Why did you guys choose this as your first challenge? It is all quite basic, simple tasks they've been asked to do here, but it should set apart the good from the not so good. When you're doing a whole range of fish, it does test their skills across that. It's not just a speed thing. So it gives us a chance to have a look at their everyday work. All of the finalists are tackling the biggest fish first, the wolf fish. With six years' experience, how is 24-year-old Matt feeling about the first challenge? Have you worked with a wolf fish before? I've worked with the fillets before, and I've not worked with a whole one. Pretty impressive looking fish, isn't it? They're a beast. And the wolf has taken 24-year-old shop owner Sam by surprise. Have you ever done a wolf fish, Sam, before? No, a bit of a new experience. And not knowing anything about it so yeah. much, it's um, thrown me slightly. Sam and Matt are both stumped by this handsome specimen. Look at the teeth on that. 
pretty wow. uh, fierce set of gnashes on it. Is it something Andy would have on his market stall? It's new to me, this one. Yeah? Yeah, I've never not done that. Not, not worked with one of these before, but it's just like all the other sort of similar ball structure in that, so it's a really go. There's not many fish Danny hasn't filleted while working at Billingsgate Market. Danny, the speed man. You've done your wolfish. Done the wolfish, yeah, yeah. Very slimy it is. It's pretty similar to cod, to be honest, yeah. Have you had much to do with wolfish in the past? Um, I've done it a couple of times, maybe. It's interesting to see Danny. He's the only one who doesn't work in a commercial fish shop. His game really is about filleting fish all the time, and he's supposedly the fastest fishmonger in the West. With only 10 minutes remaining in this first challenge, Sam has two fish left to fill it, and so has Somerset rival Matt. Andy's playing catch-up still, but Danny's racing ahead, filleting his last fish. But what do the judges think? So far, the only filler to worth his salt is Danny. Hopefully what they'll do is they'll go around and stand on the other side of the counter, have a look at everything, look at the detail, and just maybe pull some of that back off the slab, yeah. put the finishing touches to it and put it back. One minute left, chaps, one minute left. We've got ten seconds left, gentlemen. Five, four, three, two, and one. If you can step back from your displays now, chaps. Thank you. Right, Danny's all smiles over here. Yeah. I don't know if that's a nervous smile or a happy smile. No, it's all, all come out fairly nice. Danny, I like the way you've, you've put those halibut portions back together. Yeah. That looks yeah. good. Shall we have a look in the, uh, the waste bin? Well, here's our salmon skeleton. And it looks like he's done a very good job of getting most of the flesh off the bone. It's looking likewise with the halibut as well. Sam, I'm really surprised, I'm shocked. I thought he was going to be much, much better. OK, he did present things quite nicely at the end of the day, but that halibut let him down drastically. There was so much flesh left on the bone. Matt. He's pretty confident himself, you know, wouldn't change anything really. No, a little bit shoddy his block work today. Just looked a, to be honest, it looked a mess, right? Yeah. And he was very nervous, wasn't he? He was shaking, which is understandable. He could have done a lot better. Probably slightly better than Matt and Sam in terms of the overall standard, but still way off what, you know, what I was hoping to see of these guys. For me, though, Danny set the standard. I would put every single one of those fillets into any one of my customers. Well, I was disappointed with three of them. You know, they put themselves forward to be the best young fishmonger of the year, so they really need to play a bit harder. If they don't, they'll be going. Andy, I know you were nervous, and that kind of came through. Your, your hands were shaking a bit throughout. Overall, though, I was expecting quite a lot more from the filleting point of view. Danny, I felt uh, your filleting was exceptional, but you might now be stepping outside of your comfort zone, so don't be too complacent for this next round. Yeah. Matt, there was too much left on the fillet. I was expecting them to be pristine with all the flap off and all of the bone out. Perfect fillet, they were not. Sam, your halibut let you down, I felt. You might as well have chucked the fillets away and given the customer the bone. You're certainly going to have to step up your game. Yep. If you did have to send someone home after round one, who would it be? I would send Matt home. It would be Sam. With thousands of edible fish and shellfish, good product knowledge is key. But to be a great fishmonger, you also need to prepare and present and kill. The vast majority of what they're doing today is going to be alive when they first get it. Some of these guys might not have cooked some of these things. Yeah, and also one or two of them might be stepping outside of what they're comfortably doing. OK, fishmongers, it's time to turn this up a notch. The French call it fouet de mer, we call it a seafood platter. For this second challenge, we've supplied you with the freshest shellfish available. So fresh, some of it is still alive. Judges, what's going to be difficult about this one? Timing is crucial in this round. Organisation is the most important thing for me. This is their opportunity to really demonstrate some creativity. But also, we're going to be tasting this. That's part of this challenge, so they need to be thinking about flavours. Guys, uh, you know what you've got to do. You've got to kill it and cook it. Your 90 minutes starts now.
In this crucial second challenge, the judges want to test the fishmonger's understanding of shellfish, culinary skills and presentation. We've given them some of the best shellfish in the world, there's no doubt about that, and they've got to make the most of what they've been given. They've got several different species of shellfish to kill, to cook, to then chill down, prepare and then to present. The contestants have free reign to create their very own fruit de mer, so must choose wisely. It's about multitasking, but if they can't do that, so whilst that's cooking, we're doing that, and they seem to be doing a pretty good job at the moment, you know, they've got the lobsters and crabs cooking. Back in the competition, will Philip King Danny's first ever fruit de mer keep him one step ahead of his rivals? Feeling confident? You're feeling, you're feeling like you're in a good shape? Yeah, I'm feeling pretty confident, yeah. Who, uh, who do you think the big competition is? In this, I'm, I'm sure all three of them are good at this sort of things. Do you feel a little bit on the back foot then on this Maybe one? Maybe a little bit, but uh, I'll just get on with it, don't I? <laughs> with less than half an hour remaining, what do the judges think? Matt here, he's starting to lay his things out. They're the tiger prawns already cooked by the looks of it. The way he's chilled that lobster, so he's cooked the lobster immediately into slush ice to chill it down. That's a perfect example of how yeah. you should do it. Sam's doing well too. He is, and it's looking like he's cooked that lobster very well. Yeah. Danny's not looking at all phased by it, and I thought he might be. He doesn't work in a shop, but he looks comfortable in what he's doing. Certainly holding his own. 15 minutes left, gentlemen, 15 minutes left. Time's ticking away and the fishmongers are going all out with their fruit de mer. How are you doing, Danny? Your time's running out. Um, yeah, it's going well. You think you're confident it'll all be completely finished? We've got Langston right in right now, they should be done in. OK. Minute, so. Is not utilising all his time going to cost Andy? Matt is also struggling with his timings. He spent too long making sauces and now crab is off the menu. Where's the dress crab? In, in the bin. I wasn't confident it was cooked enough and I ain't going to give you something that's going to make you ill. I timed it the same as the lobster and the lobster's come out fine, but the crab, a little bit watery, a little bit uncooked looking and if in doubt, throw it out. Four, three, two and one. Guys, stop please. Their 90 minutes are up. Have the fishmongers delivered a fruit de mer worthy of keeping them in the competition? Well, guys, they look pretty impressive. So maybe we start with Andy's. Well, that's uh, just a like a white wine and cream sauce with the prawns. It's quite pleasant, isn't it? Mm. Well, I'm going to have to try some of this lobster. How long was that in the pot for? Uh, I boiled that for ten minutes. Right. I think it's a little bit overdone myself. Right, let's go on to Danny's. What are these in? These prawns are in a sweet chilli sauce. And you're just a traditional dressed crab. Obviously yep. separated the brown meat from the white crab meat. Yep. Put some chive in there with it. All right, let's move it on to Sam now. What have we done to this lobster then? Split it, dressed it, just swapped the tails over, provides a bit of colour contrast. Yeah. And this crab? Boiled in slightly salted water. We've dressed it um, as you normally would. Fluffed up the white meat quite a lot. And again, done the same thing with the claws. Um, just left the top claw on because it leaves um, a bit, bit, bit of shell. A bit of shell. A bit of shell. Yeah, Danny, we thought you'd be out of your comfort zone, particularly with regards to presentation. We felt you, you know, you did a good job. You certainly didn't let yourself down. All right, guys, uh, as you know, one of you is about to leave the competition. Danny, you're staying with us. Brilliant, thanks. Andy. The good news is you're staying with us also. Matt, the judges were disappointed not to see a crab in the Freedom Air, and they were also disappointed by your filleting earlier in the day. Sam, great presentation yesterday on the Freedom Air. However, there was the issue with the shell in the crab, uh, and they also took issue with your filleting. Yeah. The first fishmonger leaving us is Matt.